Hello everyone, um, hope you've all had a good Christmas. It's the 28th of December today, so um, yeah, Christmas has come and gone, and um, yeah, Boxing Day as well. We had quite a quiet one, um, had some family over yesterday, which was quite nice. Um, but yeah, just a bit of a, a quiet one really, which um, often where we are, we have lots of family down because um, we've got a reasonable sized house and can put quite a few people up and we're in the middle of nowhere so it's just, I suppose it's a bit of a getaway for people um, but yeah this year it was nice and quiet which was um, much needed and, and good so um, yeah I thought I'd have a couple of days back in the workshop before New Year's Eve and um, not that it's the new year yet but um, I'm going to say next year which is only a few days away I'm going to concentrate on um, building a lot of one-off speakers um, so as you can imagine with all the repair work I do um, speakers I have in for refurbishment and things like that <clears throat> and um, sometimes people send me speakers that are too far gone so rather than wasting money on shipping them back they just let me keep them um, so this year um, one of the things I want to do is go through all the cabinets I've got, all the drivers I've got and start turning them into one-off speakers. Um, I've done that from time to time here and there um, normally with a lot of success um, you know it's fun to build something from nothing um, upcycle which we all need to do a bit more of in this um, the way the world is at the moment and um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a, a good thing to do. The other thing I'm focusing on is my line of three speakers. Um, hopefully you've watched the video I did on an update on my middle size, the HA36. I now have a really good cabinet builder um, on board who's made me up some cabinets and they are just fantastic. Uh, the fit and finish is so important. Um, if I'm going to put a speaker out there, it's got to be, um, you know, it's got to look as good as anything else. So, yeah, I'm mega pleased I've, I've found him. Uh, can't say he's the cheapest, but then the quality's good. So, um, yeah, I'll be having some, uh, make up some samples or a couple of um, pairs of speakers, I should say, and send them out to a couple of reviewers and uh, get their ears on them. Um, see if there's any tweaks that I need to go back and address I'm really happy with them and then um, I will then hopefully in February launch them properly but we'll see um, anyway I'm rambling on again as I normally do so a guy I think just over a year ago who I've done um, a few bits and pieces for called Marcus Lovely chap, I keep in contact with him through um, the Celestian Facebook page and also through emails and stuff like that, which is nice. Um, and my own Facebook Haycross Audio page. He sent me a pair of these Wharfdale Kingsdales. Are they Kingsdale 3s? I'm not sure. Um, big speaker, and he had them, he bought them and had them shipped directly to me. Um, because both the tweeters were blown the guy that he bought them from sent him uh, sent some new tweeters as well which were very different they were just cheap sound lab tweeters um, so both tweeters are dead and the cabinets are in they're not great at all there's quite a bit of moisture damage on the back which I'll show you shortly um, so the first thing I do and always do is measurements um, if I've got the measurements I took I'll put them in now but I, I don't know whether I have So yeah, first thing I did was, was measure them and straight away I could, there was issues. So this mid-range driver here, uh, full of distortion and it's, it's delaminating and coming apart. Um, this mid-range seemed to be okay. This woofer, yeah good. This woofer, 
full of distortion. Um, you could hear the voice coil rubbing in the uh, motor and being a paper pulp cone, it's just, sorry, not that one. I got these the wrong way around. This is the bad woofer. That's the good mid. Yeah, so I got that bit right. So being a paper pulp cone, this is just with moisture, lost all its structure and it's just all over the place. So when this is moving around, it's deforming, rubbing. Whereas this one is holding its structure fairly well. Um, I don't think there's much I can do with this. Um, what you can do with larger drivers like this that play really low frequencies is basically paint them with PVA um, to stiffen them back up again. But I think with the surround perishing and coming away, there's, there's not really much um, you could do with that. I can probably rescue this woofer um, and maybe turn it into a subwoofer one day. Um, because these, when I did some near field measurements, they, they rumble down really low. So they're, they're certainly good in the base department, but um, yeah. So in terms of the drivers, we needed to get a new woofer, a new mid range, pair of tweeters, crossovers are probably knackered as well. <sighs> Not worth it. And with the cabinets, the way they were, um, we sort of poo pooed them. And they've sat in my garage for a, a year. Marcus said, just keep the cabinets. If you can make use of them, great. Um, but yeah, it wasn't worth 20 quid, 30 quid posting them back to him. So um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. We'll have a, let's have a look at the cabinets first and then um, I'll show you what I'm hoping to do with these. Hopefully you can hear me all right. It's so windy outside. Um, right, this is the better cabinet. So I'm gonna move this one out of the way. Um, we're pretty good around the edges and things. These have a real wood bezel on them. So we're not veneered, then uh, edge banded. Um, so we can sand this quite nicely. Uh, and we're not too bad. We've got a corner nick there, but I think, I think this cabinet is gonna come up quite well. And then if we look at the back, hopefully you can see that right, yeah. So these are the Kingsdale 3s. Um, here's our um, banana plug input jack. So I'm gonna change these four um, screw down terminals so you can get some banana plugs in there or bare wires. Um, these had a, an adjustment for the tweeter and the mid-range. And basically, I'd imagine it just adds in um, resistors so you can kind of attenuate the um, mid-range and the tweeter down so you can run them flat lower the mid-range raise the mid-range so I'd imagine it on the increased position there's no resistance flat probably has a small resistance decrease is going to introduce a larger resistance and probably the same way the treble works so whilst I would never purposely introduce switches and things into our signal path with what I'm going to do with these I'm going to keep these and I'm going to make use of them in my uh, mid-range and tweeter because I, I think yeah it's just a bit of fun really and I'm going to turn these into uh, a pair of bangers hopefully so I'm going to move this one and we'll have a look at the bad one right so I think um, cosmetically in terms of the cabinet this is the worst one So this corner here is pretty good. Like I say, we've got a reasonably thick real wood bezel here, so we can sand out a lot of the corner nicks. Um, here, if you can see that okay, I'm just gonna move you up a bit. So this corner here has blown out quite a bit um, and it's puffed up quite a lot. So I'm gonna try and clear that out, clamp and glue it, and hopefully I can squeeze it back together. Um, but otherwise, this is okay. We're good down here. That corner isn't too bad. Um, but the back of this one is, is, a, is a problem. So these are a chipboard cabinet, 
and chipboard when it gets damp, you know, acts like a sponge, soaks up the moisture and puffs up. And that's what's happened here. And also if you knock on that, the glue bond round here is probably breaking away. So this panel is, is probably pretty loose. It wouldn't take much to knock it out, I wouldn't have thought. So um, both cabinets need completely stabilizing inside. So all the corners re-glued um, and probably a few um, blocks put in there to reinforce them. Um, and then these will both get sanded back and painted um, probably satin black. Um, but first thing I need to do is obviously strip them out, clamp and glue this, and then, um, yeah, make a start on, uh, on what I'm doing with them. So I'll quickly show you what I'm going to um, do with these. Right, so my idea is to basically cut out this front um, original baffle. I'll leave a lip all the way around to fix my new baffles to. And these are the new baffles I've made. So we've got a tweeter, mid-range, 8-inch woofer and an 8-inch woofer. So I've made, that would be a left-handed one and a right-handed one. So our mid and tweeter are kept off to the side to help with the, um, the imaging and not have so much baffle reflection. Um, and yeah, two 8-inch woofers. Um, all these drivers are coming from um, a load of Celestian Ditton 22 spares I have. So I've got a number of the 8 inch woofers which are really good. The 4 inch mid range. And normally the Ditton 22 would we'll have the HF 1000 tweeter but the HF 1001 is a more robust tweeter and I've got a few of these I've redomed these so I've got a few of these lying around so yeah basically we'll have our tweeter flush mounted in the front our mid mounted from behind and our two woofers mounted from behind as well so we've got um, minimal edge diffraction you know you haven't got all of the speaker chassis that's gonna splay out the sound um, so they should look nice and clean um, I have a pair of crossovers from uh, a pair of Ditton 22s so I'm hoping to use that crossover for the tweeter mid and one of the woofers like it would have been originally um, from memory I think the woofer crosses to the mid at about 500 Hertz and then we cross from the mid to the tweeter at about 5 kilohertz um, that's too high I don't want to cross from 5k to our tweeter if our tweeter will play lower I'd rather have that nearer to 3k um, but you, we're asking a bit too much of that mid-range to do that um, and plus with such a big baffle the chances of these imaging quite well is reduced anyway so I don't want a larger driver producing those high frequencies if I can get the smaller dome to do it that's going to help with that too so that's the plan um, now the other woofer is going to work as um, just purely sub bass if I could call it that it's going to augment this so where this rolls off I'm going to look to augment this woofer with this one so they're going to be a they're not going to be a four way they're going to be a three and a half way because this woofer will still play as low as it can with this one reinforcing the low end so that's the plan so if i can use a modified stock bit and 22 crossover for this part we'll know how that works out when we do the measurements um, and then build a second or third order um, low pass filter for this woofer based on the roll off of this one um, then hopefully we can get some really good low end out of these um, I'm tempted to go all out with these if if I'm seeing this tweeter rolling off high up then I might add a super tweeter in there as well I mean these are going to be a bit of fun so we'll um, 
yeah, just do something a bit nutty with them and yeah, hopefully turn them into something a bit wacky. So um, yeah, what I'll do, I'll strip the speaker down and I'll show you the innards and then we'll leave that as part one. Um, part two, I'll get the cabinet stabilized in bits and pieces, um, sand them back and then we can, yeah, get cracking with putting them all together. But um, yeah, these should be a lot of fun. Right, so I've cut out the baffles on the old table saw as you do and this is how I'm going to arrange the drivers so I'm going to have to offset the two woofers like that because the baffle isn't wide enough to get them in side by side. I'm going to keep the mid and tweeter tight together in the top corner and the other speaker is going to be the mirror image of this so um, you can keep the mid and tweeter outboard on the right and outboard on the left and then we've got our two eight inch woofers so um, room here for the crossover to go um, so what I'm going to hopefully use is the um, Ditton 22 crossover which is where these drivers are from and what I'll probably do is is use that for the woofer mid and tweeter Obviously when I measure these I may need to adjust that because we're running them in a different baffle. Um, the spacing of the drivers might be a bit different so anyway. Um, and then I'm probably going to use this woofer um, with its own separate low pass filter. I'm going to see where this rolls off and then try and improve the low response with this. Um, I have room here to port these if I want to, but I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going to try and force this to um, fill in below this. So we'll have um, a three and a half way because I'm not going to roll this off. Uh, I'm just going to let this play as low as it can and then roll the top of this one off um, to work with this one when this is rolling off. So hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, we'll see. So I need to cut all these out now, which is going to be fun. Right, so that's all the cutouts done for the drivers. Um, I've run the rabbit bit round the mid-range cutout just to pull that forward a little bit. Uh, the woofers I'm more than happy to keep set back. So on the front um, I've rolled out all the edges and here and our tweeter as well I've run the rabbit bit around that so um, I can't do it with one hand but that's a really nice tight fit in there with our mid in there two woofers it's gonna be good obviously I've got to build a small enclosure for the mid-range which will sit in here same size as it was with the Ditton 22 which wasn't very big um, I think they're like five inch by five inch by five and I've got the dimension somewhere because I've had a few 22s here before so uh, yeah next thing now is to sand them out fun 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 right I've just waxed the drivers underneath just to see what this is all looking at like and uh, yeah nothing's fixed in obviously but um, yeah it's gonna be pretty <laughs> pretty mad yeah so a bit of a wobbly cam look inside yeah, just uh, what you'd expect to see from a 1960s, 1970s speaker, just a big open chipboard box. Um, cardboard tube there for the mid-range. I'll cross over, sitting in the bottom. Uh, I'll take that out and we'll have a look. Um, I've taken the drivers out. Yeah, nothing 
seriously impressive with these. Um, big paper woofer, paper mid, and our tweeter. So, yeah. But these were pretty special in their day, I think. So, also, I'm going to be taking off this um, kind of floor stand, if you want to call it that. Um, I think some legs used to go in here. But I'm going to take this off. I'll probably use this timber to use as some bracing inside. Um, but what I'm going to do is uh, make some probably 3 inch by 3 inch um, by 8 inch feet for these legs. Um, just to raise them up a little bit which will be removable um, but yeah that, that's it really so 18 mil chipboard big chipboard box really so I thought we'd just have a super quick look at the, um, the crossover now I've taken it out so there are the switches I was talking about and there's our crossover so one two three four inductors this is a nice big inductor 6 milli henry this might be reusable on my um, the second woofer which I'm using to augment the um, other woofer my 3.5 way so that might be useful we got a 1 milli henry there so that is would have been on the um, 15 inch woofer um, we've got a 1.5 milli henry and a 0.5 milli henry and all the caps are on the back there so I'll um, unbolt this and we'll take a look. that and the switches as well so there you go there's not a huge amount of components on this so we got a big 32 here um, so I think we have a second order on our woofer circuit um, for our tweeter second order again and for our mid-range it looks like we've got a what's the value of this one Probably a second order high pass and a first order low pass. Um, and then we have our switches here as well, um, which are introducing various resistors like we thought. So, yeah, you can see the way they've set that up there. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to rescue these switches, um, but otherwise, that 6 milli Henry inductor I can hopefully reuse um, for our 0.5 or on our 3.5 um, speaker design and uh, yeah keep this board as well so I'll use this to build up the um, crossover I would have thought um, although the Ditton 22 crossover I have is already on a board so I'll probably just use this for um, the attenuation resistors and the um, low pass for our bottom woofer. So yeah, there we go.